Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Tuesday, September the 24th and now we have Tropical Storm Helene in the northwest portion of the Caribbean Sea soon to be moving into the southern warm waters, almost hot waters of the Gulf of Mexico and then moving to the north northeast toward the northeast portion of the Gulf of Mexico. There it's expected to rapidly intensify into a category one hurricane, then a category two hurricane and a category three hurricane. And you can't rule out category four, a potential hurricane. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. But right now, there's the advisories from the National Hurricane Center showing the, uh, the path expected of the storm to take. Uh, over the next uh, several days and it, indeed it's expected to be at least a category 3 hurricane which is a major hurricane category 3 that's winds of 115 miles per hour elsewhere in the tropics we are also watching another tropical wave out in the middle of the tropical Atlantic Ocean but I'm not worried about that whatsoever but also we're going to take a long-range look into the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean because there are some new concerns uh, developing out in the further portions of the Atlantic Ocean meanwhile Looking at the advisories for the Southeast United States and Florida, particularly uh, hurricane watches and warnings are in effect. This is a hurricane warning now, uh, actually, excuse me, a tropical storm warning in effect for the Florida Keys. And currently there's a hurricane watch in effect for portions of the west coast of Florida into the Florida Big Bend. And also uh, flash flood uh, watches are in effect for a large portion of southern Alabama and southern Georgia. And this probably will be extended northward over the next couple of days into central Georgia and to South Carolina. Now let's take a look at the conditions, first of all, uh, across the uh, region and the National Hurricane Center map right here showing its advisories. I want to show you one other thing that I'm concerned about that you might be concerned about is this cone of uncertainty. This doesn't mean if you're outside the cone that you're not going to get any hurricane conditions. No, 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 no. This is the cone where the path of the hurricane, the center portion of the hurricane could travel. It could go either west or to the east of that cone. And uh, it doesn't mean that if you're on the coastal Georgia, you're not going to have hurricane conditions or tropical storm conditions. Not, not in the least. Let me show you this. This is a map of the uh, size of the tropical storm and the hurricane. And this is for five o'clock on Thursday afternoon. And look at the size of the hurricane. It covers a large portion of the uh, southeast going across the uh, uh, northeastern Gulf of Mexico into the Atlantic Ocean. That includes the coast of Georgia and southern South Carolina. And that's as of uh, the uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. As it progresses during the night, uh, this will be at 11 o'clock Thursday night. Again, look at the size. Now, the core of the storm is inside that cone of uncertainty, but the actual storm itself is very large, covers a large area. So keep that in mind as you look at these forecasts coming in from the National Hurricane Center and other locations. Uh, that is cone is the path that the storm will be taking. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. This is the infrared enhanced picture. And uh, to get your bearings, here is the uh, Yucatan Peninsula right in this area here. And there is the western tip of, uh, of Cuba uh, at this time. Now, Let's take a look at the visual satellite because it shows much more. There you can see right in the center of all this is the rotation. There's the core right there. And there again, the Yucatan Peninsula and the western tip of Cuba. And that's the Straits of Yucatan where this is moving in that direction and then it's going to curve off toward the north. All right, let's take a look at the projected rainfall because that's another major factor that's going to be associated with this storm. And it looks like most of the heaviest rain are going to be along the I-75 corridor, not 95, but 75 out in western Georgia, going all the way up into the Macon Atlanta area, up into extreme northwest tip of South Carolina with the very heavy rains and up into the mountains of North Carolina. You know, you get this type of rain in the mountains areas, you're going to have a lot of uh, rapidly flash flooding going on. And um, this golden area here, that's potential 12 to 14 inches of rain. Uh, in the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina, it looks like about two to three inches of rain potential forecast for our area uh, here and, and also in the uh, Brunswick area as well and northeastern portion of Florida. All right, uh, let's look at the, uh, I want to look at the 
the tide conditions uh, here on my website, savannapat.name, the tide calculator. Uh, just go on that and click on and get your tide. You can pick your location, year, or whatever. Uh, but anyway, there's the uh, tide information. And the tide's going to be high. The one I'm concerned about is for Thursday afternoon, and the high tide will be at 413 at 7.6 feet. Now, the marshes can hold up to about 9.6 feet. So keep that in mind. Once it gets above 9.6 feet, the marshes begin to overflow and begin to move into yards and over roads and so forth. If it gets above 10 feet, you're starting to get some uh, 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 bad flooding ongoing. And if it gets up to 11 or 12 feet, it gets serious flooding. But anyway, let's take a look at the um, chart once again. This uh, shows the wind speed and wind directions associated with tropical storm or tropical cyclone or hurricane Helene, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but uh, it's going to be showing south easterly winds flowing steadily, a large fetch, fetch of southeasterly winds flowing into the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina. And again, this is for uh, 5 o'clock Thursday afternoon, right at the time of the high tide. So this is going to be pushing the tide up about two to four feet higher than that 7.6 feet. So if it's two feet, that's 9.6 feet. We're okay, it's close, but the marshes will fill up. If it goes up to four feet, and then we're gonna have a potential of a, an 11 foot tide, and we don't wanna have to deal with that because that will cause flooding across the region and perhaps even up to 12 feet. But right now it looks more to me like a two to three feet will be probably the tidal surge and you again you add that to the high tide value and the high tide value as we just saw is at going to be at 7.6 feet now the next high tide after that won't be until friday morning at 6.7 feet and if we look at the conditions for that time frame uh, notice the storm that's at morning uh, sunrise this is at 8 a.m on friday and the winds are more now blowing parallel to the coast so the tide won't be as high. Uh, however, in the South Carolina coastal areas from Beaufort northward into Myrtle Beach, uh, the winds will be blowing on shore. That's going to produce higher tides in South Carolina, but not so much for the Georgia. Matter of fact, even on the Georgia coast south of um, the Ottomaha River in the Brunswick area, St. Simons and Jekyll Island, uh, the winds are going to almost be blowing outward. So that will help uh, generate uh, no tide surge whatsoever expected during that. All right, let's take a look at uh, another thing I want to show you is the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, it shows you the different uh, category one, two, three, four, and five storms. You can find this on my webpage uh, under the tropical uh, weather conditions and the severe weather area of the uh, webpage. Anyway, Here's what to expect. If we got a category three storm, uh, the millibar value is at 964 to 945 millibars. That's quite low. 964 to 945 millibars, that's 28.47 or 27, just under 28 inches of mercury. And with that, you can get a, a, a long, in the worst case scenario, nine to 12 foot surge, not here. Uh, that's over in the Gulf of Mexico for this type of storm. However, a category four storm would show uh, uh, millibars down to 944 or 920, between 920 and 944. Going back to this uh, map over here, let's go back in time and look at the forecast. And it's got the uh, value at 943, I think, 947, 947 millibars at landfall. And according to the uh, Saffir Simpson scale, 945, that puts it on the top of a three or a, a low end of a category four. Uh, so uh, it could be very strong winds uh, of 130 to 156 miles an hour, more or less closer to 130 mile per hour. That's sustained winds. So um, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, one thing also that's how concerned am I? I took down my telescopes. Uh, the telescopes outside, if I take down the telescopes, I am very concerned that we're going to have some very uh, detrimental weather conditions here uh, in my region. And uh, at the end of the video, I got a quick little uh, video I put together showing me taking down the telescopes. I'll tell you, it was a tough thing. Uh, those telescopes are heavy, uh, but they mean a lot to me and I don't want them to get damaged. So let's take a look at some of the things we want to know about the storm itself. Let's go back to this map over here. 
and uh, look at the time frame as I did yesterday's report uh, showing that at um, 8 o'clock or uh, 18 Zulu on Thursday, which is at uh, 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon uh, right here. And we're already beginning to see the rains moving into the region. We're seeing the rains uh, moving in late morning uh, to early morning to uh, late morning and early afternoon as the storm go, uh, progresses northward, moves up into south central Georgia, uh, in and around the Valdosta to Albany area, the core of the storm itself. And now this is at um, Thursday night at 11 o'clock. So late night Thursday, uh, we're seeing some very strong winds moving into the area, and we're seeing also some very um, heavy rains as well moving into the region. Um, again, we're in this what's called the dirty side of the storm. The east and northeast quadrant of the storm is where you have the most severe weather conditions with a tropical system in this portion of the country. And uh, here we are on the eastern side of that. So along with the very heavy rains and the very strong gusty winds, we're going to have squalls. And the squalls are brief periods of heavy rains and very strong winds. And some of those winds will be in excess of 70 miles an hour. As a matter of fact, hurricane force winds, even after the storm moves on shore, it will still be a hurricane all the way up into south central Georgia, perhaps all the way up to Tifton. We'll still be seeing 75 mile per hour sustained winds across south Georgia. And some of those will be uh, 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 blowing in the eastern counties of Georgia, southern South Carolina. Now let's go to another three hours in advance. This is now uh, two o'clock in the morning on Friday, and we're seeing intense weather conditions across southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina. Again, we could see winds in excess of 75 miles per hour, uh, along with the squalls, and then also what was known as fast track tornadoes or short lived tornadoes, uh, which could have winds in excess of 100 miles per hour over a very short area. But if you're underneath that area, you might have you know, damaging winds there, 100 mile an hour winds possible with these fast track tornadoes that will be associated with the storm. Again, it's on the eastern side and the northeastern quadrant of the storm that has the worst weather conditions, and that's just where we happen to be. Even though the cone of uncertainty is going to be off to the west of us, the storm is going to be east of the cone of uncertainty. It's a large storm, and that's going to cause a large area of damage. And along with this, expect tree damage, uh, a lot of tree damage. And with that, you're going to be having a lot of power outages. So plan ahead uh, for power outages in our area. All right, let's advance it to a little bit more. And as by... Uh, Late morning on Friday, there's Friday morning sunrise. It's all to the north of the greater Savannah area. Still, uh, blustery winds, though, coming in from the west-northwest, or actually west-southwest across our area. So it's still going to be very windy at sunrise on Friday morning. High probability, a lot of locations will be without power at this time. And then uh, going into the uh, late afternoon, uh, into uh, Friday, it begins to clear out and the winds begin to abate considerably as the storm moves away from our region. All right. And then I want to show one other thing. Uh, looking at the computer models, I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, uh, the uh, long-range look on the Atlantic Ocean. Let's go into uh, regions, North Atlantic over here. And let's... Um, take a peek at the forecast here and let's move it along and there you can see some tropical waves moving off the coast of Africa uh, and there's the uh, uh, Helene right here all right this is a uh, you know, Thursday Friday Saturday going into the weekend going into next week while those two waves off the coast of Africa that moved into the Central Atlantic Ocean just get absor absorbed into uh, fronts and and they they go away however uh, it's not over yet. And looking ahead, some new waves beginning to deform, uh, develop and form uh, well west of the coast of Africa. And that South American gyre is still rotating over here, large area of low pressure in the central and western Caribbean Sea. Uh, see if that produces anything. And the computer models are indicating um, something could be developing yet yeah, over in the Bay of Campeche. This is now Monday, October 7th. Uh, a week from this Monday, so 10 days from now. And there's that wave uh, that's getting better organized as it moves toward the uh, upper portions of the Lesser Antilles and toward the Virgin Islands. And looking ahead at the time, it continues to moving westward. Uh, I have to keep an eye on that. And there's another system moving into the uh, uh, central Gulf of Mexico. We're now looking at October 9th. 
uh, actually October 8th, uh, night October 8th, morning October 9th, and then uh, the computer model ends at this point with two perhaps hurricanes ongoing. Of course, now again, as I mentioned the last several days, this is 384 hours in advance, 16 days. You got to take them with a grain of salt, but they do show potential trends that could be developing, and the trends here is for, yeah, the tropical season is certainly not anywhere close to being over. So we got Helene coming in for uh, tomorrow night and then on the day Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday. So we're going to have to deal with that one first, and we'll worry about these other ones thereafter. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks all my um, people who have supported my channel. And I'll put the list up here as we watch me taking down the telescopes. What a job that was. It was hot out there. All right, thanks for watching. The telescopes are stowed in a safe place. That took over an hour. It's, I, I tell you, it's hot out here. It's 90, uh, 90 degrees with a heat index near 100. I am soaking wet. You know, those telescopes take fantastic pictures, but they are very, very heavy. And it, it took about an hour to take this whole system down. It's going to take about three or four hours to put it all back up uh, when the storm has passed and, and when the spirit is willing.